I am Anderin Celis. I was born on the tenth of Rain's Hand, under the star sign of the Mage, to two loving Dunmer parents in the city of Chadenhall. My father, Valdrin Celis, was an affluent Myrrh and a close friend of Count Indaris. The Count's son, Farwill Indaris, and I were close friends for most of our childhood. We spent the majority of our days at the castle, pranking guards and climbing the rooftops. At the age of eight, I began showing signs of magical talent. My mother quickly had me apprenticed to the head of the local mages' guild, a moor named Falcar. The moor was harsh, but taught me the fundamental aspects of magic. After my twelfth birthday, Falcar began showing me more powerful magics. He had me watch as he would enter shops and taverns just to turn entire rooms of friends into enemies. When I was fourteen, my father left on another one of his business trips for Frathen Drothen, a longtime friend of the family. Months passed and not a single letter arrived from father. When my mother finally questioned Frathen, he broke down and told her Valdrin had been keeping secrets from her. He told her Valdrin had grown intimate with another woman and had fled to High Rock with their unborn son. Mother was heartbroken and fell into a deep sleep. I never spoke to her again. With my parents gone, taxes went unpaid, and the house was sold. Count Indaris let me stay at the keep. His son, Farwill, began serving as a squire to a local knight while my studies suffered. I was cast out of the Mages' Guild for injuring a fellow student. The Count grew tired of always rescuing me from the guards. I never asked to be rescued. On my eighteenth birthday, I fled from the living hell that was my life. All I could think of was what my father had done. Why would he cause mother so much unnecessary grief? Why would he abandon his only child? I made my way to the city of Braville. I pawned my magical skills for cheap until I ran into a member of the Black Bow Bandits. She told me I could make easy money if I joined up with them. So I did. For a year we preyed upon traders who passed between Leowin and Breville. But like all good things, they are fleeting. One wrong step and I found my entire crew ambushed and killed by a group of knights calling themselves the Knights of the White Stallion. I was taken alive where the families of those I had robbed had me sentenced for life. Now, after being in this cell for nearly a year, one thought burns in my mind. I will never forgive you, Valdrin Celis. Hello, hello, and welcome to my playthrough of The Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion. So I've gone ahead and modded the crap out of this game with the intent of completing the vast majority of vanilla content and the two major DLC expansions. I've beaten Oblivion many times, so I'm very intimately familiar with its flaws, including its leveling system. So hopefully with my mods, we can mitigate some of that terribleness. I am going to be setting our character's stats all to five when we start, including attributes and skills. This is sort of to represent our character's time in prison for the last year. He's lost all the knowledge he's had. He's malnourished, not very well fed. And so we're going to set his stats to five. It's sort of a role playing thing, also sort of a way to make the Elder Scrolls difficulty last longer, because normally in these games you become very overpowered very quickly and there's never really any difficult challenges past a certain point. I'm hoping this will make the game difficult for an extended period of time. I will be role playing my character's choices as it fits into who he is as a character, but the actual video itself will just be me playing the game. The plan is to create short recaps at the beginning of each video, similar to the one you saw before this, of him speaking about what happened last time, who he's met, and what he's feeling. This face cam will be in it for this little intro I'm doing right now, but the rest of the series will be without it, as I feel it takes away from the experience. Other than that though, thanks for watching and enjoy the video. I was born 87 years ago. For 65 years, I've ruled as Tamriel's emperor. But for all these years, I've never been the ruler of my own dreams. 
I have seen the gates of oblivion, beyond which no waking eye may see. Behold, in darkness a doom sweeps the land. This is the 27th of last seed, the year of Akatosh 433. These are the closing days of the third era and the final hours of my life. Pretty epic stuff. So immediately you can tell I do have a face mod for this game. As much as I love the ugly potato faces, I figured since I had a face mod for Morrowind, I would add one for Oblivion. So I'm going to try and recreate the character here. There should be an image on your screen. That's what I'm going for. But again, this is still Oblivion's character creator. So we'll see what I can do. I am not hopeful for getting something decent looking. All right, so I think that is the best we could possibly hope for in Oblivion's terrific engine. It doesn't look obviously exactly like the image I have, but it's close enough and I don't think it's going to get any better. So we're going to name him. His name is Anderin Celis. And there you go. Hey there, you, Kinsman. I haven't seen another Dunmer in here, and I don't know how long. Where are you from, huh? Vardenfell? You got a wife back home? Tell you what, I'm getting out of here in a couple of weeks. When I get back to Morrowind, I'll look her up. She must be so lonely. Don't you worry, eh? I'll take care of her long after you're dead. Oh, that's right. You're going to die in here. Hey, you hear that? The guards are coming. For you. <laughs> We've been cellmates for a year, and that's the first thing you say to me? My sons. They're dead, aren't they? We don't know that, sire. The messenger only said they were attacked. What's this prisoner doing here? This cell is supposed to be off limits. As usual, mix up with the watch. I... Never mind. Get that gate open. Stand back, prisoner. We won't hesitate to kill you if you get in our way. You, prisoner, stand aside. Over by the window. Stay out of the way and you won't Talk get hurt. To yourself is not a sign of mental prisoner, illness. stand away All from right. the door. <clears throat> Over by the window now. All right, I heard Stay you the first put, time. Prisoner. No sign of pursuit, sir. You. I've seen you. Me? Let me see your face. You are the one from my dreams. And you are the then one from my dreams. the stars nightmares. were right. And this is the day. Gods give me strength. What? What's going on? Assassins attacked my sons, and I am next. My blades are leading me out of the city along a secret escape route. By chance, the entrance to that escape route leads through your cell. That's awfully convenient, don't you think? Who are you? I am your emperor, Uriel Septim. By the grace of the gods, I serve Tamriel as her ruler. You are a citizen of Tamriel, and you too shall serve her in your own way. I always feel like these beginning questions are a little dumb. Of course my guy would know who the Emperor is. Maybe not like what he looks like, but come on. Dude, why am I in jail? Like, I know why I'm in jail. Perhaps the gods have placed you here so that we may meet. No, it's those people As I murdered. As for what you have done, 
It does not matter. Really? I murdered a lot of people. That is not what you will be remembered for. It probably should be. Uh, yeah, I go my own way. So do we all. But what path can be avoided whose end is fixed by the <clears throat> almighty gods? Please, sire, we must keep moving. Better not close this one. There's no way to open it from the other side. Looks like this is your lucky day. Just stay out of our way. All right, well, conveniently enough, we have been freed like from our imprisonment. I'm just waiting for the giant spiders to show up. Close up left. Protect the emperor. Yes, protect him. And me. <laughs> Uh, I'm not going to set my stats to 5 until we pick a class from Boris, Boris, because it will keep resetting that every time we choose like a different, another option, like the birth sign or the class creator. So I'd rather just wait and type it in once than have to do it again. It'll make the tutorial go by faster too, because at this point, everyone has seen the tutorial. There's nothing really to show off. Let's get rid of those rags though. Take this katana. They won't be the first to underestimate the ahead. blades. I'll take point. Let's move. Yes. You stay here, prisoner. Don't try to follow us. I won't. I won't. Mostly because you lock the door with a key, and I don't have a key. <clears throat> Conveniently, this rat here. <clears throat> so yeah, we've all done the tutorial. I am still going to keep it in the video, though, as I do feel like it is a core experience of Oblivion. We're going to pick up as much as we can, even though we're probably going to have to drop it because our carrying capacity will be about um, 25, I think, when your strength is 5. I forget how the stat calculations work in this game. So mods, I like I said, I have a lot of mods and some of them might be controversial. They do change some core aspects of the game. One of the mods I have lets your attributes transfer between levels. So, for example, if we had a times five strength modifier for our character and we chose, oh, we are already over encumbered and we chose not to level it up. The next time we level, we'll still be able to pick that times five multiplier. That one might be kind of controversial because it makes it so you don't have to min max so much in this game. I feel like it's fair, though, because the amount you do have to min max in this game is honestly very ridiculous, especially when we're starting so low in our stats. But but even normally, because enemies will outscale you very, very quickly in this game if you level up and you don't level up well. Enemies are very tanky, bullet spongy or I guess arrow spongy in this case. I have another mod that I think will help with the bullet sponginess of the enemies in this game. It basically, I don't know, it's kind of hard to explain, but as you level up, your character gains a very minuscule amount of extra damage built into the character. So at level 25, our six damage fire spell will do 25 damage. Basically, it's just a way to avoid swing the sword for 20 minutes while you hit an enemy who won't die. Like I said, might be a slightly controversial mod, but it's my game. I'll do what I want to do. Um, <laughs> I don't know. It's, if, you, if you don't like it, well, you kind of just have to go play your own game with your own mods. So another rather controversial mod I may have is a lock picking one. So if you're like me and you've spent too much time picking locks in Elder Scrolls games, well, this is the mod for you. It basically, depending on your skill, will auto lock pick certain chests for you. So like this one, I think is locked probably very easy. And it just opened automatically for us. It, you still get the experience for security, but I don't have to sit there and fiddle with the freaking lock pick screen and have to cut it all out. And I just I spent too much time picking locks. I'm sick of doing it. So, yeah, we're not going to be picking locks here today or ever. <laughs> I just, I don't know. I just, I, I can't stand picking locks anymore. It's not so bad in Fallout 4 and uh, Skyrim because it's so stupidly easy. And I, at some point I did genuinely enjoy the lock picking in Oblivion. I just do not wish to do it any longer. So I'm not going to. 
Holy crap. The strongest opponent in the entire game of Oblivion, the physics. That is also one of my favorite things about Oblivion are the physics because there just aren't any in Morrowind and it's sad because nothing flies up in the air when you kill it or other. Okay. We are also almost nearly dead. So that is another issue we are likely going to run into. When you set your endurance to five, which we will be doing, you don't have any health, obviously. And uh, that that's going to be terrifying. I don't know what we're going to do to start out here. We might have to do a bunch of quests that pay well, but don't involve any combat because I don't see us winning any sort of combat that we enter at the moment. At least for a while, we are definitely going to prioritize leveling up endurance because we need the health more than anything. Another issue we are going to run into that we did not run into in Morrowind is um, training caps. So in Morrowind, as long as you had the money, you could train infinitely. In Oblivion and Skyrim, you can only train five times per level. I don't know how we are going to deal with that. I thought about removing the cap, but I kind of feel like that is changing too much of the core game. And I, I don't know, I mean, I say that, but all of my other mods do that. But to me, it's a little bit too much to remove the cap on training. We're going to have to find ways around it, and I think that'll be pretty fun, hopefully. No, he is not one of them. He can help us. He must help us. Must I? They cannot understand why I trust you. They've not seen what I've seen. How can I explain? Listen, you know the Nine, how they guide our fates with an invisible hand. I don't know. I don't really think about it. I've served the Nine all my days, and I chart my course by the cycles of the heavens. The skies are marked with numberless sparks, each a fire, and every one a sign. I know these stars well, and I wonder which sign marked your birth. So, like I said, we were born under the sign of the mage. And this right here is going to help us get through the low levels because having that extra 50 points of magicka will at least allow us to cast the heal spell and the fireball spell once or twice before we die. <laughs> the signs I read show the end of my path. My death, a necessary end will come when it will come. And what about me? I don't care about you. Your stars are not mine. Today the maid shall light your way on the paths of glory. Can you see my fate? My dreams grant me no opinions of success. Their compass ventures not beyond the doors of death. But in your face I behold the sun's companion. The dawn of Akatosh's bright glory may banish the coming darkness. With such hope, and with the promise of your aid, my heart must be satisfied. Aren't you afraid to die? No trophies of my triumphs precede me, but I have lived well, and my ghost shall rest easy. Men are but flesh and blood. They know their doom, but not the hour. In this, I am blessed to see the hour of my death to face my apportioned fate, then fall. Do you see the uh, sword that's sticking through the back of your head? Did you envision that? I go to my grave. A tongue shriller than all the music calls me. You shall follow me yet for a while. Then we must part. You may as well make yourself useful here. Carry this torch and stick close. <laughs> you got it, boss. Stick close and let us do our job, and you'll be all right. Talos, preserve us. Oh, man, you gotta love the voice acting in Oblivion. Wes Johnson, who voices the vast majority of characters in this game, is just... He's a miracle worker. 
<laughs> For the blades and the For emperor! The emperor! <laughs> good job, guys. Good job. Yeah, I think the hardest part is going to be deciding what 25 pounds of stuff we should carry what? out of here. I don't like this. At least gold is weightless. We have that going for us. Looks clear. Come on. We're almost through to the sewers. Damn it! The gate is barred from the other side. A trap! It's a trap. Side passage back there. We're the drop. Let's go. They're behind us. Wait here, sire. Wait here with the emperor. Guard him with your life. Go and for, for the, the emperor! emperor! Um, I don't think you're supposed to detect the assassin. No okay. Further. You alone must stand against the Prince of Destruction and his mortal servants. He must not have the Amulet of Kings. Take the amulet. Give it to Joffrey. He alone knows where to find my last son. Find him and close shut the jaws of oblivion. Yeah, we're not going to be doing that for a while. <laughs> <laughs> it's I've never seen him detect the uh, assassin in the wall. That is honestly amazing. Protect me, Boris. I'm just a, a little boy. I'm weak. I've been in a jail cell. We failed. I failed. The blades are sworn to protect the emperor. Now he and all his heirs are dead. Yeah, you kind of had one. The amulet. Job. Where's the amulet of kings? It wasn't on the emperor's body. He gave it to me for some reason. Strange. He saw something in you. Trusted you. Probably should. They shouldn't. say it's the dragon blood that flows through the veins of every septum. They see more than lesser men. The amulet of kings is a sacred symbol of the empire. Most people think of the red dragon crown, but that's just jewelry. The amulet has power. Only a true heir of the blood can wear it, they say. He must have given it to you for a reason. Did he say why? Something about a Joffrey and the gates of oblivion and I don't know. He's a weird guy. Joffrey? He said that? Why? There is another. Nothing I ever heard about. But Joffrey would be the one to know. He's the Grand Master of my order. Although you may not think so to meet him, he lives quietly as a monk at Wainan Priory near the city of Coral. See, like, <laughs> give me some more options here. How do I get there? First, you need to get out of here. Through that door must be the entrance to the sewers, past the locked gate. That's where we were heading. It's a secret way out of the Imperial City. Or it was supposed to be secret. Here, you'll need this key for the last door into the sewers. The sewers? There are rats and goblins down there. But from what I've seen of you, I'm guessing you're an experienced pilgrim. Am I right? <laughs> no. No, we are not an experienced pilgrim. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to make the class here. Um, and I will bring you back when we're done. All right, so I made a custom Nightblade class. And the idea behind it is we are going to be a sneaky spell sword sort of character. We are going to sneak around, cast spells. And I feel like that fits Andorin's backstory. He was a member of the Mages Guild. He got kicked out. So he joined some bandits and started robbing people. So we did magic for our specialization. I did intelligence and agility. And then I did alteration, conjuration, destruction, and illusion. Because those all pertain to the Mages Guild. And that's the type of magic he probably would have learned. And then I took light armor. Um, it's kind of difficult to not wear armor in this game. I do have a mod that adds unarmored as a skill, but I don't know how good of a mod it is. So we're just gonna roll with light armor. And then I did security and sneak to sort of show off that bandit stage of his life. It's probably a bit of a mistake not to take blade or blunt as one of our skills, but I think we'll be okay. I don't know. <laughs> I'm kind of regretting it already, but it's fine. We'll do fine. We'll have lots of spells, right? Are you sure you want to be a Nightblade? Yes. Really? I would never have guessed. Still, 
I don't think you'll have any trouble with rats and goblins. That's what you think, but we're about to set all of our stats to five, so... After the sewers, then where do you I go? You must get the amulet to Joffrey. Take no chances, but proceed to Wayne and Priory immediately. Got it? No promises. Good. The Emperor's trust was well placed. What about you? What will you do? I'll stay here to guard the Emperor's body and make sure no one follows you. You'd better get moving. May Talos guide you. By the way, thanks for recovering Captain Renault's sword. I'll see that it is given a place of honor in the Halls of the Blades. All right, so like I said, we're going to set all of our stats to five. But before we do that, let's get near a body so we can drop all of our stuff on to one of them. Because we're not going to be able to carry anything. So there you have it. We have 10 health, 55 magicka, and that's only because of our birth sign. Normally we would have five magicka, 20 fatigue. All of our attributes are set to five. All of our skills are set to five. And we have a total of 25 carrying capacity. So this lucky assassin here is going to be the recipient of all of our garbage that we're going to throw on him. Oblivion is a very finicky game, and I don't trust it not to bloat my save if we don't do this. So we're just going to. Yeah, maybe we'll grab a robe. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's just. Yep, here you go. Take all of our freaking stuff. We're going to have to see what we can actually take here. I want to keep a bow because it doesn't weigh very much and we'll be able to use it as our primary weapon. Arrows kind of add up the weight, but 55 is a good amount. So we can carry basically 10 more pounds of stuff. Probably a good idea to grab the healing potions. So now we have three more pounds and we need to think monetarily about this because we need money. So we should take the lightest stuff. All right, there we go. We're at 23 out of 25. Um, so I just noticed, and I don't know if this is a bug, that our health is at negative four right now. So I think what we're going to have to do, and I don't really want to do this, is we're going to ha have to set our endurance to 10, and that will give us six health. So that's annoying. Like I said, I want all of our stats to be five, but I think we will die the second we move if I don't increase our health there. Um, how we'll deal with that is, so the way we're going to be dealing with that is the first time we level up and we get a times five multiplier for our endurance, we will just subtract it from this. So when we level up, we'll set our endurance, it'll go up to 15, I'll, I'll set it back down to 10. That's really annoying. I don't know if that's caused by a mod or if that's just the vanilla default behavior. Kind of annoying, but yeah, so we are completely incompetent now in combat. We will not be fighting the mud crabs, rats, and goblins in here. Uh, we do, we can cast some spells, so let's get fire out because this freaking rat is right in our way. And we just need to run for it. We are not looking for trouble. Hopefully they're not fast. And yes, this is the speed that we start at. It's pretty miserable. <laughs> All right, let's make a hard save so we never have to do that again. And let's exit the sewers. And so we enter into one of the best, I don't know what this is called, introductions to the world. I love this scene, leaving the sewers and seeing how freaking gorgeous this game is. Obviously, it's a lot more pixelated than our nostalgic memories allow us to remember. But I still love this game. It is very serene and the music for it is some of the best I feel like in video game history. So yeah, I think we're going to end it here for today. I don't want the video to be too long. I want it to be an easy series to jump into. Um, this video is more sort of an introduction of the character of what the series is going to be about and our mod list basically. And it sort of gets the story going. If you enjoyed the video, please consider liking and subscribing. If you have not already, it does help a lot. Other than that though, thanks for watching and peace out.